Hey guys, it's Mario, and we are in game number two, and we're going to show you how to punish the Zerg player if they're not being very aggressive. We saw a Roach opener. Uh, now we're going to see a little bit of uh, what, what a heavy Zergling opener should look like for you as the Terran player. This is against a Korean Grandmaster. Um, I think he's close to mid Grandmaster. I'm not 100% sure. But it's pretty much the same thing. We're going to speed a little bit past the opener. So you see Supply Depot, Barracks, Refinery. I think I put it in this position. Normally you want to put it in a way where the Overlord has a harder time getting to it. This is pretty easy. See, but this is a little bit more out of the way. And then comes the Reaper, the Supply Depot, the Orbital Command. Reaper always after the Supply Depot. That's my preference. You can change it if you really want to. And we go back, and we've always built the command center in the base. I really, 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 really like that. So the Reaper kind of pokes around, and um, you know, while the build goes on at home, we just kind of scout around, chase a little bit, uh, you know, around this base, and we're like, okay, we're getting a little bit stuck. Now we got to check his gas timings. So here come the first two Hellions. Here comes the supply depot. There's the refinery, the overall command is done. So now we're checking. Okay, no gas there. We're retreating a little bit. We took a bit of damage, and we're getting some uh, factories right down here. Now we got them after the first two because we weren't 100% sure about this gas geyser, and we didn't quite want to go up yet. So since we were not sure uh, by the time that the speed links would have hit, we went ahead and got the two Hellions before the two factories. And uh, you know, don't forget your supply depots and your armory and so on. It's really easy to get supply blocked with this build, unfortunately. Um, it's very tight. You have to make sure you make supply plus at the right time. So we weren't 100% sure, so we got the two high ends first. And now what we're going to do is, uh, you know, we've got the Reaper watching the watchtower, so we know he's not there. Check this corner real fast over here and make sure, okay, do you have speed links? And just in case he does, you know, we're rallied inside the base. we got a wall going down, supply depot, bunker. Here's your one Marine on patrol. Blue Flame should be coming up any moment. We're just uh, trying to get rid of some slow links. So this was our cue. We we're like, okay. You've got some slow Zerglings. Um, oh, or sorry, he just barely got the speed upgrade. But we, you got some Zerglings. That's a good sign that you have Zerglings. You know, probably not as much of a chance as Roaches. And here's the third base, and we see the double upgrade. So we know, okay, odds are you're gonna stick on Zergling for quite a little bit. So what we're doing is we're producing Hellions and Blue Flame instead of Siege tanks. So we're not getting the Gas Geyser because we're pretty confident that it's not anything like two base meter or something. But once we have the Hellion and the Blue Flame and the upgrade going, then we can get the Gas Geysers for a transition. You see, they're not going to stay on it very long. Um, if you get the Gas Geyser after you get the Blue Flame, the Armory, and you have your unit producing structures, then you time it at the same time as his Lair, which means your Armory, I mean your Gas Geysers will really kick in about the same time he drops his Fire, and that will give you the resources to get a Thor. So you, if you're sure it's Zergling, and you're sure it's going through bases, you don't drop the gas geysers until you have these two upgrades and all the Hellions building. If you are not, you know, if it is two base mutalisk, you simply do not produce out of these two factories until you're going to four to four. You know, you just make two fours at a time. And you go up to four or six, and then you begin, you know, with a siege tank production, and then you make Hellbats as a mineral dump in the meantime. But we're pretty confident that it's going to be circling. So we're making quite a few Hellions. Now you can't stick on them for too long. Eventually you want to make siege tanks. You know, you just uh, once you get the game sense or once you really feel okay, he's gonna switch out of this, you know, we can't stay on it. So it's just to exploit a timing window until we can make a definitive choice of tech, and then we rearrange our you know our build order a little bit. So what we're doing here is we're getting Thors a little early. Why are we getting Thors so early? Well, we have a lot of map control, and we're pretty sure it's not going to be roaches. So Mutalisks are going to be there eventually. Our gas geysers just kicked in. So even though without looking, we think it's going to be Mutalisks. So we're, we're going to start Thor production. And it's OK, though, because we, we haven't seen any sign of roaches. And if we do see a sign, you know, we can cancel a Thor and, 
go straight into uh, a siege tank production. But Thors aren't awful against a small amount of roaches. So you got to be, you know, can I squeeze a Thor in? You know, is he going to have a lot of units? And right now he's not because he's got a lot of Zerglings. We've got a lot of Hellions. We've got Blue Flame. He's got to deal with this. So all we see right now so far is just Zerglings dealing with the Hellions. So we're pretty much safe to assume that it is Mutalisk. Even though we're wrong, it's going to be roach, Roaches in just a moment. But once we can, you know, define that, we're not going to have too much of an issue. So again, we got Thors, and uh, Thors in production, we've got one back at home, one another one about to finish. We still don't have our third yet. Your third timing is when you feel you need to expand, and you're not going to do a timing push. More often than not, you're going to stay on two bases for quite a little bit. So another two Thors in production, and now we see the roaches. So uh, we start our third command center. We're like, okay, so he's going to do some roach pressure. We're going to drop two extra two extra factories. This is this is where it changes. Normally, I do not drop these factories. Normally, I drop one. Uh, why is it changing? Well, you get your third whenever you feel like your harassment has stopped. That is when you get your your third. Um, when you have no more possible chance to harass. And you are not allowed to get it until you're producing out of two factories or three factories, getting your plus one upgrade, your blue plays done, and you have all the gas geysers, and you know you got at least ten workers mining here. You do not want to start your third before that. Once you feel it's safe to do so, then you drop your third. Your third is going to be almost always around the same time because the timing on when he can stop stop your hellions is always going to be around the same time. It's always going to be around ten minutes. And you drop your third, um, especially if he's doing a two-base all-in. You can deny it even longer until he drops his. You don't need to drop yours until he has his. See, we use the Hellions to deal massive amounts of damage to his third. So even though he has it, it's not up and running. So we're not concerned about him having it. Um, but in a moment, the harassment's going to hell. And we're not going to have medevacs. We're not going to have a Hellion. So we're not going to have any map control. So what is he going to do? He's going to drone up. Or at least you should drone up. That's you know if they're playing a macro game, that's what they're gonna do. So we acknowledge the fact that okay, you're going to drone up, and I have no way to punish you. It's time to match your economy. So that's kind of what you can do. If I can punish you, I'm not matching your economy. I'm using everything I can to punish you and maybe win the game. So um, why two factories in this situation? We saw roaches and we saw zerglings. We also didn't really see any sign of a lair, and if he's producing roaches, it's most likely not going to be Mutalisk. If it's a heavy ground composition, we can focus on more factories. If it's a heavy air composition, we don't need to get as many factories because we're producing a lot of, uh, putting a lot of resources into the woods. These are our, our last two Thors, and then, you know, we wanted them to finish, and then we're going to go into siege tanks. So the siege tanks right away, and then we're getting a starport with the reactor. Almost always will the barracks make the reactor for your starport. And then we're getting another reactor and another tech lab. So two, uh, two reactors for the factories and three tech labs. So we're getting a missile turret here, and we're getting a missile turret here, because even though we're pretty sure it's a ground attack, we have plenty of Thors to deal with an air attack. And uh, we have one Thor over here just in case something comes up and comes up, and then we have the barracks scouting around, making sure we see the ground attack. But just in case it's a mutilist transition that you know we're not prepared for, maybe we were caught off guard. We're getting one missile turret in each line. Also, in case it's burrow roaches or a roach drop with burrow. From here, we can get another starport. I'm a really big fan of two starports once you have five factories because you can produce lots of Vikings, you can produce lots of medevacs, and um, from you know we can see okay here comes his attack. Here's the Thors, and he comes in through a little funnel. We weren't able to lift in time; it would have helped. But we see the Thor being a little bit under heavy aggression. We just move that out of the way, off to the side, absorb the you know the damage. The cute things that you don't really need to do, but they help. And then the game is over. So we were able to exploit the fact that he went many Zerglings and wasn't making a definitive tech toys early on with, uh, you know, with so many Hellions. And we were able to crush him. So thanks for watching, guys. We're going to go into another variation of how to deal with Terran and Zerg.